Lincoln's teacher. And uh, what do you think about Mr. Marsochi? Is he a separate person? He's, he's rabbi. That just blew my mind. First of all, who's Mr. Marsochi again? Rabbi. 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 Wow, that's his name? I thought it, I always referred to him as Mr. Rabbi. Who? Rabbi. His actual name is Marsochi. What? He has a name? Everybody knows him as the rabbi, but who the heck is Mr. Marsochi? He's a good guy. He's quite different for. Uh, most teachers here at Hendrick, but he puts his own spin on things to keep things interesting. Clearly he needs to get a life, but that's aside from the fact, you know. Kind of, he's, he's kind of up there on his ivory pedestal, thinking he's better than everyone else in, uh, in certain ways. I mean, he does do the whole corrupts thing! And, you know, wh why is he talking to me? Why is he calling my name? I mean, I am the spirit of Hendrick, but he calls my name every five minutes. What, what did I do to him? I didn't do anything. Yeah, there he is now. I think Mr. Marsochi, you know the old, have you ever seen the Beatles um, album? You know, the last, uh, Sergeant Peppers, where you have like the Beatles out, right? And then the old Beatles are dead. I think Mr. Marsochi is dead and only the rabbi lives. Yeah. The first time I met Jack Berry, I was convinced he was the Matrix. Because if you look at him from certain angles, you can see kind of glow around him where he meets reality. Soon after that, I asked him a question about the philosopher Nietzsche. And he looked at me and said, no, 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 that's Nietzsche. So then I just figured he was a So, um, you have come to us anonymously about the rabbi, is that correct? Yeah. And uh, how do you feel about the rabbi? I think it's called electrolysis, but it didn't work on him. He's covered in fur. I don't feel anything about him, but I just wonder why we have a missing link. We have a genetic anomaly. You've got our primate cousin up here terrorizing kids. Well, what can I say about Mr. Howlett that uh, hundreds of pastry chefs and mental health workers across the country haven't said. He's, uh, he's a brilliant man. He's very well read, a very well read man. Uh, he's drought and famine resistant. In fact, he's a very giving man. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, he's able to, at the end of each week, uh, take only the food that has dropped on his clothing uh, that week and feed a small village. He does uh, jumping jacks in front of the kids. Yeah, he does. He does. And, and, and that makes uh, that, that just makes him uncomfortable. Plus, he sits on a desk sometimes. He also hops over it too. And uh, look, if a guy wants to wear suspenders, that's his business. I didn't know what it was to be a musician um, until I met Dirk Garrapy at this school. Um, I had played music for a long time, but he. Uh, he really taught me what it means to be an artist. And uh, the thing I most remember uh, about his teaching is he told me, Rabbi, you have to be the piano. Be the piano. Because when you're playing an instrument, you're manipulating something that's outside of you. But if you can be the piano, then you and the instrument become one and you're just playing with yourself. Rabbi to me is, I don't know, he, he seems just like a lonely, a lonely theology teacher. He just stays, stays in his room by himself, reads his Bible. I mean, there's nothing wrong with reading the Bible, but I mean, my feelings about him, I don't really know what my feelings are about him, to be honest. Elusive. You know, he's sort of, um, he's a man of great depth, at least I think. I don't really know him too well, so. Look, man, all I can see is hair. I can see fur. I can see a Muppet. Uh, one thing I can't see is the light. He has his little expressions. He needs to get some different shirts. He, he wears the same clothing a lot of the time. He's got to mix it up a bit. And clearly he doesn't get many women, despite what he claims. Look. At first I thought, yeah, this guy's okay. 
he's he's up there. He's a theology teacher. He'll teach the kids a few things, but uh, he mostly focuses on a hey, your mother, giggity, and I I don't I don't get why he does that. The rabbi is a deeply disturbed man. Uh, anyone who refers to himself as the rabbi uh, in, in seriousness is clearly disturbed. So he's, he's a man who's in need of serious psychological evaluation, uh, perhaps help, uh, but he's very far from where your average person, especially teacher, should be. Um, so he, he is someone who needs help. Okay. Rabbi is <clears throat> a character in his own soap opera. I think it's somewhere across between Borat and Robert De Niro, with a little bit of quagmire thrown in, maybe, you know, so. And, and this sort of like unusual, unbelievably deep knowledge of scripture. Steve Salamone is definitely uh, the faculty member, colleague of mine that I can relate to the most. Um, our, our histories are similar in so many ways. Um, Steve Salamone uh, went to high school here. Uh, I went to high school in Warwick, just, just down the road. Uh, Steve went on to go to West Point and to serve his country uh, in the United States Army. And uh, I, of course, served in the, uh, the Boy Scouts of America during my, my teen years. And Mr. Salamone, uh, most people know this, uh, received his master's degree from Harvard. And I have driven through Cambridge many, many times. It's always hard to draw the line with Rabbi between where where he's being serious and where he's being his his like character self, and so um, he he has it down so well that that uh, he can pull it off and make you wonder if he's being serious or if he's being the rabbi, or if being serious is being the rabbi. You know, he's he's uh, that far deep into his rabbi persona. Can't choose Solomon. You could, or you could choose Dealey back a few years ago. I'll go with Dealey. Okay. Mr. Barry, I know uh, that he's very tall, and uh, and he has a very deep voice, and uh, he teaches theology. Absolutely, Mr. Barry. Why? Um. Well, I heard from old folklore from my dad that uh, Mr. Barry used to be able to dunk a basketball. And uh, I'm almost 100% certain that he can still dunk a basketball. So I would imagine he's, he's the better choice. I prefer Barry, absolutely. Many reasons. One, I actually enjoy his class a little bit more. And because I think Barry would knock Mr. Rabbi out with one punch to his face. I, I don't think Mr. Rabbi would put up to him whatsoever. I mean, he'd probably throw some Bibles and books at him and a few karate moves, but. I just think Mr. Barry would just obliterate him. Yeah, in your face, Rabbi. Michael Curran is uh, definitely one of the brightest new talents here at, uh, at the school. I had Michael as a student, of course, when he attended uh, our school. And uh, now that he's a teacher here, I don't think it's overstating it to say that I've, I've really become a mentor to him. Um, I wouldn't say that I've taught him everything he knows because that wouldn't be humble and if uh, rabbi's anything he's humble, but uh, I pretty much have. I think he would have to say that uh, most of what he knows about teaching uh, and life, uh, he has the rabbi to, to thank for. And he really reminds me of a young rabbi, uh, except for the rage. Um, and I've tried to help him uh, work on that delicate balance that we all have to have between uh, spirituality and rage. He's got the rage part real, real good. 
The rabbi is a complete liar as well. That's something that uh, your viewers should know uh, when they're watching this. <laughs> okay. Is that too? <laughs> is this what? Is this too much? <laughs> How did uh, how'd you get the name rabbi? <clears throat> I've been here for 20 years, and uh, it was actually my first year. I believe it was a class of sophomores who kept asking why Jesus was being called rabbi in the scriptures. How come everybody keeps calling Jesus rabbi? And uh, there was only so many times I could tell them to shut the hell up. Uh, so finally, uh, I explained to them that uh, rabbi is a Hebrew word. It literally means my great one. And it's a term used as a title of respect for a teacher. And of course, Jesus, among other things, was uh, a great teacher. And so they said, well, you're our rabbi in a way because you're teaching us about the scriptures. And um, it was actually a very nice thing. It's become just the same way kids will refer to their coaches as coach. And uh, most people don't know my, my real name. Uh, they make announcements over the PA calling me the rabbi. And most parents come in and don't know my name. Uh, probably the best story was a parent one year called the guidance uh, people and talked to a counselor and uh, her son was in my, my class and she very innocently uh, expressed that she would really rather her son learn Catholic theology from a Catholic. Uh, she had heard that a rabbi was teaching them so she thought I was actually Jewish. I never dated her or anything, I, you know. 